Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon. Mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the throne of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Join me as we continue in prayer. We are here, loving God, to mark the season of Lent, to begin our journey to the cross. As we follow Jesus into this unknown, we ask that you would guide us throughout these 40 days in Lent as we journey deeper into your embrace. And as we journey to the cross, let us put to death those things that separate us from each other and from you. Loving Lord, at the beginning of this season, we're met with the challenge of handing over every bit of our lives to you. And perhaps this Lent, if we give up anything, we can give up our way and give ourselves over to your way for us. To give up what clutters our lives and all that distracts us from the simple truth that you love us. Lead us and guide us on this Lenten way, God. And may we walk with Jesus toward the hill just outside of Jerusalem. And may we, like him, take up our cross and follow, spending each moment of our lives living responsively to you, just as Christ himself did. For we know that this is the faithful way. And in the name of Jesus, our companion on the journey of faith, we pray. Amen. My name is Melissa, and I'm one of the pastors here at First Baptist Church, and I want to welcome you to our Ash Wednesday service we're so grateful that you could join us, and we hope that you were able to pick up one of the packets of, of information and items to help you as you go through this service. But if not, there's still much for you to participate in tonight as we think about this journey of Lent. Ash Wednesday is the beginning, the launch of the season of Lent, which is 40 days, including six Sundays, as we journey together towards Easter Sunday. And traditionally, this is a season of preparation and spiritual discipline, reflection and restoration with God at work in our lives. And there are a lot of people that use this season to give something up, but the season is even more than that. Sometimes it's adding something. Either way, the objective is to not think about our efforts, but rather to create space for God to do what only God can do in our lives. Ash Wednesday is part of the beginning, and the ashes reflect and are a symbol of death as we think about tonight our own mortality. And as we do impose the ashes, we do so in the sign of the cross, which is a reminder to us that although death is the outcome here for our lives, it is not the last word, that Christ over death is the last word for us. And so we have that hope as we continue and we worship tonight with this service. A couple of announcements as we continue and begin Lent. 
We're starting a brand new sermon series entitled Fix Your Upper Renovation of the Heart. And this will coincide with our new series of small groups for this season. And we want to invite you to be a part of one of those groups. There are five groups that are being offered. Four of those are virtual and one is in person. And there are different days of the week beginning Sunday, February 21st. You can find more information on the screen by going to our website and learn about those teachers and uh, the times for those meetings as we work together through a book called Renovation of the Heart by Dallas Willard. So we hope that you will participate in one of those groups this season. Each Lenten season, we also do a memory verse together as a family of faith. And this year, our memory verse is from John chapter 15, verse 5. We invite you to work on memorizing this throughout the season. And tonight, let's begin by reciting it together. And as I read it aloud, I invite you to do so as well in your homes. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. Let's continue to worship. Good evening. I'm so glad to be with you in this very special Ash Wednesday service. So I want to share a story with you about a time that I made a mistake. I wonder if you've ever made a mistake? Well, this was a really embarrassing mistake. I was at my babysitter's house and she had a group of friends over to share with them about her mission trip to Russia. She had just come back from Russia showing pictures. It was a fun evening with adult friends that were there, and I was the only kid. So we were sitting around watching the pictures from her trip, and I had a big cup of something to drink, maybe lemonade or water or something like that, and I spilled it on the carpet. I was so embarrassed, and I was so embarrassed that I looked over at my babysitter and I said, Look what you made me do. I just wanted to blame someone else for my mistake because I felt so embarrassed. So here's something we're going to hear about from our Bible passage tonight. God does not want to punish us for our mistakes. God wants to help us learn from our mistakes and do better in the future. That night, my babysitter did not punish me. She helped me clean it up. She said, it's okay. We'll just be more careful next time. That is exactly how God is with us when we make mistakes. And so we can admit our mistakes. We don't have to blame other people. 
we can take responsibility when we do something wrong. And we can trust that God loves us and will help us do better in the future. Please pray with me. God, thank you for loving us even though we make mistakes, even though we sometimes blame others for our mistakes. Help us to listen for how you are helping us learn from our mistakes and wanting us to do better in the future. Amen. spirit within me create in me a clean heart oh God and renew a right spirit within me 
cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and renew a right spirit within me. spirit within me create in me a clean heart oh God and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from your presence oh Lord your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and renew a right spirit within me. And renew a right spirit within me. February 7th, 1885 is the day that writer and playwright Sinclair Lewis was born here in the United States. A satirical writer of American life and culture in the 1920s, with classics like Main Street and Babbitt, Lewis was the first American to win the Nobel Prize. He won that in 1930 for literature. Yet for all of his renown and his wealth, Lewis ended up dying in Rome of alcoholism at the age of 65. Now the story goes that upon his death in 1951, he was cremated and his ashes were sent to the U.S. Embassy in Rome to later be sent back to the States. And one morning a visitor uh, went to the embassy and saw a worker on her knees with a dustpan and a broom. And next to her was an overturned memorial urn. And when she asked the worker what she was doing, the worker replied nonchalantly, sweeping up Sinclair Lewis. Stories like those are sobering reminders of the fragility of life. As if we needed really any reminders during this past year. Life's delicate nature has been at the forefront of our minds as we've endured a global virus and grieved nearly two and a half million people worldwide dying from this virus and nearly half a million here on our own nation so far. And add to this other losses, the death of loved ones from other causes, the, the loss of milestone events and celebrating with those with people in the way that we wish to celebrate, and just a million small losses throughout the year. We find ourselves humbled by the reminders of how quickly things and our lives can be nonchalantly swept away by life as we move on to the next thing. Facing our fragility, our weakness, can really feel depressing, and I totally get it. I understand why a service focused on marking ourselves with ashes and reminding each other that we're going to die is not really a Hallmark or Disney kind of moment. I recognize that embracing our mortality flies in the face of our culture, which totally seeks immortality. But for those who have experienced a great deal of loss, one of the things that they have learned is that it's somewhat liberating to accept our mortality rather than to fight it or to deny or avoid the inevitable. In fact, it can actually be incredibly bold and brave to just blurt out the truth that's not offensive at all. We are dust and to dust we return. Once we declare it, it it's something like we can finally exhale and receive then the gift that comes from surrendering to who we really are, dusty people. You know who else is mindful of our fragility? Our creator. 
Our psalm today is a beautiful song of remembrance and thanksgiving. It's a remembrance of who we are and thanksgiving for who the Lord is and how the Lord deals with us. Let's look at these verses together, beginning in verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. These verses focus on the nature of God. God, full of mercy, grace, and loyal love, does not deal with us according to our sins. Rather, God is merciful and compassionate and loyal and love to us, his children. And then in verses 14 through 16, the focus shifts a little bit to us. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it and it is gone and its place knows it no more. God has compassion on us, for God remembers how we were made. God remembers forming us out of the dust and breathing life into us. How intimate, how personal. You see, there's a unique bond between a creator and their creation. And it is this bond that is the source of God's compassion for us, God's children. Now, as humans, it's easy to read those three verses about being dust and mortal and blown away by the wind and feel a sense of insecurity and fear, realizing how vulnerable we are, how helpless we are. And perhaps that is why the psalmist has placed this reminder of our fragile state in the middle of these two beautiful bubble wrap passages declaring who God is. Verses 18 through 13 remind us God is merciful, compassionate, and loyal in love to us, his children. Verses 14 through 16 remind us we are dust, but then quickly come to verses 17 through 18 that return to focus once again on who God is. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. If the truth of our lives were that we are dust and only that, that was the last word, then yes, this would be really a bummer of a service and I would not blame you for turning it off right now. But that is not the last word. Our mortality is not the last word, nor is our brokenness the last word. God is the last word. And let us not forget what God can do with dust. We are mortal, but death is not final. We're broken, but we have a Savior. The acceptance of this, which we pronounce on Ash Wednesday, is freedom for us, and it's really music to God's ear. Because when we embrace these truths, the real journey can begin. As followers of Christ, we are resurrection people. This is absolutely true. But we are also Ash Wednesday people and Monday Thursday people and Good Friday people as well. We need every step along this 40-day journey to the cross to remind us who we are and to hold our identity between two beautiful bubble wrap truths about who God is, our merciful, compassionate, and loyal and love God who remembers how we were made. Our Lent series is titled Fixer Upper, Renovation of the Heart. We love the idea of renovating. We have entire television networks dedicated to this and we invest a lot of time and money in renovating our homes and our cars and our closets. But what about investing in the renovation of our heart? 
this Lent, we want to create the space that we need to invite God to do what only God can do in renovating our lives. Now, if you've been part of a major renovation project, you know the challenges that can go along with that and develop unexpectedly. What might start as a simple project soon leads to discoveries of things that we didn't know needed to be worked on, but they need to in order for things to be done right. We know the risk and the cost of avoiding the non-glamorous, the, the foundational, the hidden work. So in our own lives, let's give God access to everything so it can be done correctly and that we can build on a strong foundation. We also know that renovations can involve a lot of dust. And we spend a lot of time and money trying to clean up after all the dust that results from the renovation work. At the end of our series on Easter Sunday, when all the dust settles, we will still be dusty people. But rather than a nuisance to be cleaned up, my hope and prayer is that we will wear our dust as a beautiful reminder of who we are dusty people that the Lord has not dealt with according to our sins, but according to God's compassion and mercy and loyal love. And tonight, as we mark ourselves with what has made it through the burning, may the ashes imposed in the sign of the cross on our forehead or our hand remind us that by the grace of God, death is not the end. We are not abandoned. We are not forsaken. God is merciful, compassionate, and loyal in love to us, God's dusty people. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. God forgives, heals, and redeems us. Our strength is renewed. We are satisfied in God's presence. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor charge us according to our wrongs. As far as the east is from the west, so far does God remove our transgressions from us. God remembers we are dust. Our days are like grass. We bloom as the flowers of the field. The wind passes over and we are gone. Yet the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. God's love endures forever. In just a moment, I will lead us through the time that is called the imposition of ashes. The time when we put ashes in the shape of a cross on our forehead or on our hands. I want you to know that I miss sharing this time together with you in our sanctuary, but I'm thankful that we can gather virtually for this special service. 
If you haven't already, I invite you to mix just a little bit of oil or water in your little cup of ashes. It only takes a tiny bit. If you need to pause the video for just a moment to go and get that, this is a good time for you to do that. Brothers and sisters, God remembers that we are dust. Our days are like grass. We bloom as the flowers of the field. The wind passes over and we are gone. In the last year, so many of us have felt this in our souls. We have faced life's fragility more than we ever imagined we would. We are finite beings. Our lives come to an end. We are imperfect. We are human. And we are loved. You are loved. Each year, Christians around the world take the palms that they waved in celebration on Palm Sunday, and then they burn them. And we use these ashes on Ash Wednesday to mark our foreheads and our hands as a reminder of our fragility, our humanity, our sinfulness, and our belovedness. I invite you now to grab your container of ashes here and to take some ash on your finger and then to put it in the shape of a cross on your forehead or on your hand. If you're there with someone else, you can put ashes on one another. And I'll pause for just a few seconds here while everyone in your home receives their ashes. I invite you now to say these words with me. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Beloved child of God, hear this assurance. God is slow to anger and abounding in mercy. All of our sin, our pain, our humanity is held within God's steadfast love. When we hope in God's love, we will never hope in vain, and we will never be alone. Amen. I would like to invite everyone to join us in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven Hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.